Well, we were scheduled to be in uh, Revelation 18, but um, for various reasons today we're found in Proverbs 18. So I haven't forgotten about Revelation 18, but this morning we're in Proverbs 18 and looking at one verse today in Proverbs 18, verse 10, we read, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Again, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Uh, Back in uh, the days of old, excuse me, I guess when Solomon was writing this, and especially with his father before him, uh, this maybe meant meant a bit more to them than it does to to you and I, uh, this this idea of a tower. To them, it was something uh, tangible and real. It was a defense to be had. And I know as we uh, drive about and wherever we go in Ireland, um, we're able to see these round towers. And it was just last week, I was with John, and we were at a, I think we were in Lusk or wherever, but I just between different things that were kind of blocking the view, there it was. I said, John, look, there's a round tower. And just driving up and down the N7, or if you're out and about in Kildare there, you're liable to be so familiar with it that you don't even remember it's there anymore or you overlook it. But sure enough, there, sort of on a a high place in the town of Kildare, there's that high tower, that round tower. I don't know too much about them. I was reading up a little bit about them, and uh, the the round tower there in Kildare, it's uh, one of many in Ireland, but it's the second highest in the country, and it's the highest one that you can actually climb. So I found that very, very interesting. And uh, reading about the history uh, behind that and the background, um, you know, things were very different not too long ago here throughout the country. Um, I picked up a book a few years ago, A a Dummy's Guide to Irish History, or Dummy's Guide to whatever it was about Irish history for dummies. I thought it was suitable, it would help me. And I started off, I guess, way back in the the Stone Age, and then chapter by chapter it taught the dummies, you know, this epoch and this era and this and that. And it wasn't too long I was uh, going through the book And there was um, something that was constant, whether it was thousands of years ago or centuries ago, but as I read, um, it was the same stage, but just different characters as the generations came and went. You know, this one came and went. This generation had its time and disappeared. But there was something familiar as I went throughout all the history there. And it seemed to be famine, war, pestilence. I go up to another couple of hundred years, famine, war, pestilence. Famine, war, pestilence. Uh, The poor little country was in turmoil, like a washer machine agitating this way and that way. No peace, bloodshed. If there was peace, there was starvation. And if there wasn't starvation, there was disease and pestilence. And they were uh, dreadful and, and horrible times. And... I was reading in Kildare, the the church there, I guess we call it a cathedral, I think, today. But within the space of about 163 years, uh, that had been ransacked and and destroyed some 16 times in a relatively short amount of time there as marauding bands or clans or tribes or Normans or whoever they, they might be kept passing this way and that way. It was just destruction and burning. And maybe it was with that background, Uh, there seems to be somewhat of a mystery why these towers were built. But um, one of the suspicions was that it was meant for a refuge, it was meant for protection, when uh, the times they were just so difficult and danger was so close at hand. There had to be a place, perhaps, where when the bell tolled, you know you could run to, you could climb into, and you would be secure, and that you would be some safe from the the sword and from the fire and from the pillaging. And so they they built that tower there. And um, I suppose the people that were going through such tribulation 
back in that time. There was sort of a comfort and there was a security to know there is a strong, high, round tower. And they would listen to the bell, maybe as they were sowing their seed, or maybe as they were weeding the crops, or maybe even reaping in the time of harvest, they would keep their ears out for that bell. And maybe when times were really tough, they would kind of measure off the distance. How far am I from the tower? How long will it take me to gather up my children and get back to the tower when the clan or the tribe or the enemy comes with a sword and flame or whatever it might be? And uh, so it wasn't too long ago, I guess time-wise, maybe for us it is, but that the tower and a verse like this, that the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it and they're safe. It had maybe a, a deeper meaning. Maybe their, uh, their understanding of this verse was, had more clarity than it might, might be uh, for you and for me. And um, especially did for David when we read our Old Testament, how David gave thanks to the Lord and what the Lord had done for him. And in 2 Samuel 22, verses 1 to 3, and I won't read all that, but uh, it starts off, And David spoke unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of, his all, out of, the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. And he goes on speaking of the Lord. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior. And as I was collecting my thoughts uh, to speak about this today, I went through my Bible and because it was a cross-reference about the high tower and um, I had forgotten it was even there. But um, I had a little note in my Bible on this passage in 2 Samuel and these, uh, regarding these verses, I think it was. And here I was in trouble. It was the year 2010. I won't go into detail, but I was in trouble. And there wasn't really anybody to help me. And the only one that I could think of that could help me was the Lord. And I, during that time in my uh, personal difficulties, I looked up and I was crying unto the Lord. And the Lord answered. And I had a date there, if I remember. It was 2010. And I just wrote there that, that as I was reading that passage this day, it was the day that the Lord had blessed us with safety and deliverance. And um, again, I guess it was then that I was probably reading, he is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior. In Psalm 61, verses three to four, uh, David said, for you have been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. In Psalm 144, verse two, uh, David writing again, my goodness and my fortress, my high tower, and my deliverer, my shield. And uh, again, the high tower here is just meant to be an illustration that when uh, these words fall into our ears, strong tower, high tower, uh, it's not meant so much to look at the architecture and heavy stone and protection, but it's the, in our minds that it might lead us to think of God in that way. That when we think of a strong fortress and a place of safety, it's meant to go from our head to our heart that that's what God is for me. That's whom the Lord Jesus is meant to be for me. God has made a place for me to have a provision of refuge, peace, and security from the storm. And in Isaiah 32, uh, verses 1 to 2, it says, Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. And then I think we find our special blessing in verse 2. And a man shall be as an hiding place from the wind, and a covert from the tempest, as rivers of water, in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. But I like that. And a man shall be 
as a hiding place from the wind and a covert from the tempest, from the storm, that there is somebody that we can turn to from the wind and from the tempest and to be a hiding place. And that's mentioned again in our Bibles, that term, a hiding place. And again, it's David that comes to our help and teaching us here. And he calls it my hiding place. In Psalm 32, verse 7, you are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall compass me about with songs of deliverance. And then another time I was reading recently <clears throat> about an incident uh, that had reference to Psalm 119, uh, verses 114 and verses um, in verse 117. But uh, some of us are familiar with uh, the Ten Boom family in Holland back in the, the time of World War II. And many of us remember uh, the account how the Ten Boom family, it was uh, an older man, Casper Ten Boom, I think he was in his 80s, and he had his uh, two daughters, I think they were in their 50s, they were unmarried, but they took it upon themselves that to turn their home into a hiding place for the Jews. And they had a secret uh, room built into their home there in, in Harlem and Holland, and uh, they would hide the Jews. Well, somebody snitched on them, and uh, the police, the authorities came one time and arrested them, took them down to the police station. Uh, the old man, Casper Ten Boom, was, was uh, offered amnesty, or he was, they offered to let him go if he would promise to behave himself, that they would let him die in his bed in peace, being the old man that he was, um, if he wouldn't do these things anymore, so to speak. But he said, in effect, that if someone came to his door today in need, if they were in trouble, that he was going to help them. So they kept him on the truck and carted him off to the police station. And in the police station there, all the people were seated, seated on a floor. There wasn't even chairs, I suppose. And here was a man in his 80s seated on the floor being uh, arrested. And he had, I guess, a, a holy habit in his home at nine o'clock. At nine o'clock, those that were in the home, family or maybe guests, they would gather for a little Bible time and a time of prayer. But here they were in a police station on the floor and no Bible. But that holy habit had been inculcated into their hearts and they turned to old Casper at that time. And the account goes that even without a Bible, but the word was in that old man's heart as he ministered to the people. And um, in Psalm 119, verse 114, 114, thou art my hiding place and my shield, I hope in thy word. And then in verse 117, hold thou me up and I shall be safe. Before they were arrested, um, they came up to his daughter, Corey, Corey Ten Boom, and they demanded to know, where are the Jews? Maybe where is the hiding place? They knew they were there, but they couldn't find them. And the one guard began to beat Corey, striking her over and over again. And after a while, she began to feel the blood filling up in her mouth, and she cried out. And she cried out, Lord Jesus, help me. And the man stopped smacking her and he said if you use that name again I'll kill you it's interesting if you use that name again I'll kill you because she cried out Lord Jesus help me what else could she do there was no one else to defend her or to help her she was an if I could term an older lady in her 50s and this man was repeatedly striking her all she could do was to cry out to the Lord those simple words, Lord Jesus, help me. And the man said, you use that name again, I'll kill you. But he didn't strike her again. Not just as the next step as we look at this verse here, as we think of the high tower, and we think of the person of the Lord, 
and it leads us to his name because we're told the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. In Psalm, in, I'm sorry, in 1 Samuel 17, 45, um, when uh, David came before Goliath there, it says, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel. In Psalm 124, verse 8, we read, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Isaiah 50 Verse 10 says, let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. And there was a time in, um, in, in the history of old, we read in Second Chronicles 14, 11, it was King Asa. And things had been going fairly well for King Asa. But an enemy came up and came into the land, Zerah of Ethiopia. We really had about, it said in the old language, a thousand thousand. So if that was a specific number, not just a, a term of a multitude, it means roughly a million man invasion came into, the, into Israel there. And I think they had 300 chariots. We read, and Asa cried unto the Lord his God and said, Lord, it is nothing with you to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on thee, and in thy name we go against this multitude. O Lord, you are our God. Let not man prevail against you. And then we read that the Lord had blessed them with a great victory. There. So we read here, as we study and look into this beautiful verse in Proverbs 18.10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is safe. I like that they run into it. They just don't dally, but there's trouble. There's the day of trouble. Uh, there's no peace or whatever it might be, and they run to the name. I wonder if we were to have time and take the time this morning, individually, there was a time that you had no helper and you didn't know where deliverance came and you ran to the name. You called on the name of the Lord in the day of trouble and the Lord delivered you. The Lord brought forth his strong arm and brought you deliverance. It would be great to be able to hear that uh, in our testimonies and we ought to at some point in time. And uh, like David here, as we read that, he spoke to the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. To give testimony when the Lord uh, is gracious to us and he saves us in that way. But there's something about the name of the Lord. We sing about the name so often. Uh, we even sing about this uh, in this verse here that the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run, it, run into it and are safe. And there's just something about the name. I think there's even a song we sing, there's something about that name, the name of Jesus. I think it was old um, John Newton has a song, how sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. And it's because the name of the Lord is precious. Yes, it protects us, but the name of the Lord brings salvation and just a few verses in our New Testament there, here. It says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. You know, I was thinking about that tower. And when there's peace and safety and there's plenty back in times of old, I guess maybe that tower kind of got forgotten. There was complacency. You know, the, their bellies were full, the crops were coming in, there were, hadn't been invasion for a while, and, and maybe before where they would um, maintain the tower and keep the pathways and the roadways clear to it, um, you know, complacency comes in, and they, maybe it got into disrepair. I remember being in Israel a few years back, 
and I stayed in a few of the people's homes in Israel, and, and I'm speaking from my poor memory here and from my um, faulty recollections of what was said to me there, but in the various homes I was in, and one especially comes to mind, there's the different rooms, there's bedrooms, and there's the bathrooms, there's the kitchen, and there's the living space and all that. But from what I understand that there was a law for homes that were built after a certain time, there was a law that every home was to have a shelter. Every home was to have a shelter because you never knew when the terrorist was going to come. You never knew when the rocket or the mortar shell would arc on in and land into the neighborhood, the estate, or the home. So it was a law that every home had to have a secure place and a shelter. And there was another law that that secure place and that room for a shelter in the homes in Israel was to be kept free and clear. I guess they could have provisions in there, canned goods or water or whatever it might be, but it was not meant to be a storage room. And the one home I was in, here it was a laundry room. I think they had a washer machine, maybe a fridge and a, a dryer and, and all this. And the thing was, that was against the law. That was not meant to be. But why did that happen? It happened because there was peace and security and fullness which led to complacency. I'm sure if war was declared and the rocket and the mortar was falling in upon them, out the fridge would go, the washer machine and the dryer and everything else superfluous would go out and the place would be a place of security and it would, they would follow the law exactly. And as I read these New Testament verses here, I, I think about a danger to you and I as well, complacency. When we're full, everything is going our way, there's no trouble, the sun is out, the birds are singing, and like the tower or the safe room uh, that I've been speaking about, we're liable to forget about it, we're liable to neglect it. But when trouble comes to the soul, when sin enters in and we're without God and without hope in the world, God has provided us a high and a strong tower. We read in Acts 10.43 that through his name, Whoever believes in him shall receive remission of sins. Do your sins burden you this morning? We read here that through his name, that there's a strong tower that you can flee to. That through his name, whoever believes in him shall receive remission of sins. And a favorite verse of mine, so simple, but so meaningful in Romans 10.13 for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And here we are this morning. We've got, for the most part, most of us, we have health, we have strength, we have vigor, and everything maybe is going our way. And a verse like that, whoever shall call on the name of the Lord, might seem distant, might seem like a spare tire in the boot. You know, you're glad it's there, whatever, but... Um, not so long ago, maybe within the last year or two, there was an older gentleman that I would visit with frequently. And um, his health seemed to be good. And I would speak to him and I would try to mention this verse to him, uh, to direct, to hopefully to direct his mind to the Lord. And as time went on, as he got older, his strength was failing, his health was failing, and it really seemed that my friend was going down and was approaching eternity. And as his reasoning was being um, uh, deteriorating and um, to hear him speak, it was a, a labor because it was hard to understand. But because we had spent a good bit of time and time past speaking that whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, haltingly and in a broken manner, he would try to say that verse and he would ask me to help him that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And it's my hope that as he approached death and indeed did die, that the name of the Lord for him was a strong tower that he could run into and be safe. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11, it reads in part about what the name is for the believer. We read, but you are washed. 
you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. And John gives comfort to us in 1 John chapter 2, verse 12. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. And then a wonderful promise in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. What wonderful promises these are as we uh, read our Bible and as we see before us that help is but a prayer away. You know, to take in some air and to look up and to pray, Lord, help me. Lord, save me. That God has given provision to you and for me. Indeed, that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. And Father, we thank you for our Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father, for the name uh, that has been given to us, the name above all names, and that, that the Virgin and Joseph were told that you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Thank you for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father. We thank you that through the name that we are saved, that through the name we have eternal life, that through the name we are washed, sanctified, and justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. And Father, uh, there's many of us here this morning, and maybe every heart knows its own trouble. Maybe every heart, Lord, knows that there's nowhere to go but to you. And we thank you, Father, for the promise that you have laid out before our eyes and before our ears this morning, that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. And Father, as we go to our communion now, we ask your blessing upon us. And in Jesus' name, we ask, amen.